This week will be a little different. Rather than a tutorial on a specific functionality of MADS, which is what we usually talk about, I figured we would go through a patch that I came up with tonight that I think has some good instructional value. It also uses MADS in some of the ways we've talked about before and some of the ways we're going to talk about in the future, but most importantly, uh, in a patch, because the reason we learn all this is so we can make music uh, and interesting patches with this. So... I came across this patch, and like I said, I really enjoyed it. Maybe not for 20 minutes at a time, but again, I think there's good instructional value here. So what I thought I would do is go over the general overview of the patch, uh, explain its functionality, uh, show you a few tweaks you can make with some small adjustments, uh, and then what I'll do is unpatch the whole thing and see if we can get back to where we were so we can build this up because this patch can be recreated. I mean, obviously the maths is the star of the show. The DPO really isn't doing anything um, terribly DPO-ish. Uh, you could recreate this with any two oscillators. Nothing special there. Uh, this low pass gate could be a regular VCA. Um, you would need a ring modulator for this specific application, but I think that's where you could actually have some fun and change things up. And then also a sample and hold or random module, in this case the Woggle Bug. But really I'm only using these one, two, three, four, five modules out of the whole rig. So again, it's not terribly complicated, but I think there's some there's some there's some interesting things in here. Uh, it all starts with channel four of the maths. And this is the main envelope that controls the low pass gate, which is acting as sort of our main VCA. And you can see it controls the whole patch because if we're not cycling everything's off. But engaging that one switch starts or stops the patch. This channel of maths does several things, uh, the most important of which is controls the VCA. The second of which is we use the end of cycle output to basically clock the woggle bug as a sample and hold. Uh, and this is pretty common in a lot of patches, especially if you've ever done anything like a Krell patch, uh, where the duration of the envelope will also correspond to the length of the pitch of that note and you're only going to have one pitch for that note. So each envelope cycle is going to have its own discrete pitch. So when this is engaged, it clocks the woggle bug, which will send a new stepped random output to the one volt per octave input on the DPO. And then that single cable is controlling both because I have the follow control all the way up, but you could just bolt that out if you have two different oscillators. So the woggle bug, uh, will control both the pitch of this as well as the speed of what we're going to call our LFO. So channel one of maths is going to be our envelope. Channel two is going to be our LFO. And the rise and fall, both control, uh, is being controlled by the woggle output of the woggle bug. So our LFO is going to expand and contract as the woggle bug goes up and down. Now what the LFO is controlling is the fall portion of our envelope. So that's what makes the envelope go longer or shorter. So the rate at which the modulation of our modulator is uh, being modulated. And that's how you get those random bursts of short notes and then the longer notes. And then finally, we're also using maths as a uh, full rectifier, which we'll go over in detail in a, pre in a uh, future video. But it basically is taking two oscillator inputs, uh, inverting one of them, and then using the OR output to basically chop off all of the um, negative voltage values. So all you have is a single rectified voltage. And what that's doing is going to the mod mix, which instead of a ring modulator, because this is rectified in the maths, instead of ring modulation, now we're in amplitude modulation, which gives it a really nice tone. And again, we'll explain that more in a future video, but I think in general, all you need to know is this is where you can add some color in your own setup if you wanted to recreate this patch. So if we listen to it now, as far as changing the tone, as it is now with the oscillator set to roughly the same, you get this nice woody tone. And some of the lower notes to me almost sound like a double bass. If we increase 
In this case, this would be the program oscillator. It changes the timbre quite a bit, and you get some nice bell-like tones in there, uh, while still having the strong fundamental, which is a hallmark of amplitude modulation. If we turn that back down and then turn up the carrier, you basically get a lot more sine wave, more pure tone content, so the lows sound really low and the highs sound very high frequency. Um, but just by changing those, you get a lot of different sounds. If you turn them both up, you just end up with a lot of high frequency chirps, bleeps, and whistles. Kind of chime tones, but... Back down here, we've got some nice, like I said, woody, woody tones. A little bit darker. Uh, the attenuverter up here for channel one uh, will indicate how long this will be. So here we're going to have the, the long notes are going to be much longer. And then if we lower this attenuverter value, we can end up with lots of small rapid notes. And I think the patch sounds pretty good somewhere in between. So like I said, that's, that's the general overview. And now what we're going to do is take out every patch cable uh, and hope that we can get back to what we're at. I'm not going to adjust any knobs because then we're really hosed. Uh, but I think if we just take everything out, uh, we can get back to where we were, and we'll build it up along the way uh, so you can get a sense for how I built this up. And what I'm going to do is do it in the same order that I originally patched it so you have a, a feeling for what I was thinking when I made it. Nice. So here we are, our patch is naked, and we're going to build it up first with the basic oscillator VCA envelope combination. So that's where I kind of started with this whole patch. Uh, we're going to be using the sine wave output of our DPO uh, oscillator B. When doing this AM type stuff, using simpler waveforms like a triangle wave or a sine wave usually works out better. So we're going to take the sine wave output into our mod to mix and into the VCA. Now we could bypass the mod to mix at first, but that's going to be part of our patch later, so we're just going to include it for now. So the output of the mod to mix will be going to the input of the LXD, the 12 db proactive input and then channel 4 of maths we're not going to use the unity output we're going to use the dedicated output 4 one because i find that the lxd responds a little bit better to having a little bit softer envelope so we can attenuate here and then also to remove this channel from the output bus which we're going to use later so now if i put that into the cv control input and i start looping this That's our basic patch. But that's not very exciting. So then what I did is I set channel one of Maz up as an LFO. Um, so right now it's cycling fairly slow, but what we're gonna do is have this, we're gonna take again, output one here, and we're gonna send that to our fall control. So now our envelope length is going to vary over time. So output one, again, we're going to remove this from the output bus down here by plugging something into the output jack, the dedicated output jack. That also gives us uh, a fine control over how much this is going to modulate the fall value. So now, you can hear it's getting faster, and then as the LFO gets slower, it'll go slower. So that tracks. Turn that off for a moment. Now I'll turn this down because we're going to add CV control here in a second. The second function of channel 4 is that the end of cycle output is going to control or clock the sample and hold output here. And that means that they're going to start working together like I said before. Uh, the shorter the duration, the faster that that's going to pull new value, uh, and they're going to feed off of each other. So for that, I'll use the end of cycle output, and we're gonna clock the woggle bug. So when we put that into here, it basically stops the random value output. Next, I'll take the stepped output from the woggle bug. So each time the sample, that's the classic sample and hold output. So each time the clock value 
uh, gets pinged, it'll generate a new value. So now our oscillator will have different pitches uh, for each note length. So that's already pretty cool, but like I said, we can do we can do a little bit more. So next what we're gonna do is also use another output from the Woggle Bug. And that's gonna go from the Woggle output to the both control up here. So now our LFO is gonna have randomly controlled lengths, which will randomly control the fall, which will randomly control when the end of cycle goes to the Woggle Bug, et cetera, et cetera. So for that, we'll take the Woggle output and go to the both control. So now, we've already got most of our patch here. At this point, all that's left to do is get our amplitude modulation going. And for that, we're going to take the outputs of oscillator A, the triangle and the sine wave outputs. We're gonna put them into channels two and three of maths. So that's gonna give us our amplitude modulation uh, because it's going to act as a rectifier. And like I said, I'll go over that in a future video with the whiteboard and everything as far as how that works. Uh, but for now, like I said, this is where the flavor or the extra timbre that you can add into this patch comes in. So we're gonna take the triangle wave output, go into channel two. I'm working with my left hand here. I realize my forearm kind of blocks this from time to time. I'm gonna take the sine wave output and go into channel three. So what's interesting is these are going to be in phase with each other, but the rectified value is going to be an alternating uh, triangle, sine, triangle, sine, triangle, sine, uh, which is pretty interesting, I think. And then the OR output is how we get that rectified value into our carrier input on the Modimix channel one. So at this point, if we did everything correctly, when we start this up, it looks like we've got our patch back. Now there's a little bit of a slide in there, and I believe that's because the follow control on the DPO doesn't respond instantly. There's actually a little bit of a glide there, even if this is all the way up. With this control up, the frequency of oscillator A will follow that of oscillator B, but even all the way up, there's a little bit of lag. If we wanted that to be instant, we could molt out that stepped voltage and put it into there. But uh, that's how we get the patch. Hopefully that's informative, and if you want to set this up on your own, uh, I'd be interested to see what you can do with it. But this is a good example of Maths doing its thing in a patch. Uh, it's the heart of this patch. It's the whole... The, the, the whole point of it. So I uh, hope this was helpful.